in harmony restored by Andy Clark. Formidius Prime Hive burned. It rang with the cacophony of war. The ground shook until shattered glass jingled and rubble danced. Lasguns screamed and autoguns rattled out their staccato war cries. Artillery sent rhythmic thumps and booms echoing between the tall flanks of ruined hab blocks as though along man-made canyons. Smoke filled the air, billowing through the district's rubble-strewn streets from the blazing wrecks of ground cars and blasted mining vehicles. Yave cradled his pulse carbine and made himself small behind the cratered remains of a drywall. The Tau gun was a reassuring presence in his hands. It was obviously and infinitely superior to any Imperial technology that Yave had used during what he thought of as his old life. It hummed quietly to him, its machine spirit calm and harmonious, so unlike the belligerent ghosts within Imperial machines. Oh, but you can be wrathful when you must, can't you? He whispered to it. Just like the Tau themselves, he thought. Not peaceable cowards, but not murderous, wasteful zealots either. They won't shy from fighting, but their first recourse is always words, and when they kill... It is for the greater good. The thought centred him further, filling Yave with the sense that he was fighting for righteous masters and a righteous cause. That was good, he supposed, because today it seemed likely he was going to die for them. Fire Team 7 report, came the voice of Geu Shena, his fire team commander, in his ear. She spoke through the small, smooth Vox earpieces that Yave and all his team wore. Another Tau technology, again far superior to the lumpen Vox sets relied upon by the Empress soldiery. Seven three here, came Nuri's reply through the bead. Seven five, reporting, said Tuller. Seven eight, here, Yave added in a low voice. He didn't know how close the enemy might be and had no desire to give himself away. Several seconds of Vox silence followed Yave's words, and his heart sank further. Only four of them left now that the rout was done, worse than he'd feared. From the oath she breathed before speaking, Shana felt the same way. We commend the souls of our fallen to the care of the greater good. In death, may they enjoy the harmony we are all denied in life she said reverently. Then her tone hardened as she pressed on. Does anyone have eyes on the enemy? Did they follow us? I don't think so. They were still busy with the gene stealer cultists, said Tuller, sounding disgusted. Yave knew how the big man felt. This war had been hard enough when it was just the Imperials they had to worry about. When the gene stealer cult rose up from the mines and sewers, they had plunged Formidus into absolute anarchy and the neatly ordered plans of the planet's Gervesa liberators had collapsed. The only consolation, as far as Yave could see, was that the sudden uprising had given the Imperials as much trouble as the Gervesa. They have the numbers to plough on regardless, though, he thought sourly. Not to mention that stringent willingness to feed men and women into the meat grinder until every victory's won. Such mindless slaughter wasn't the Tau Empire's way. Thus... Neither was it the way of the Gervesa. Still, all the guerrilla tactics, feigned retreats and sudden ambushes in the Empire didn't look likely to win them the war for Formidus. You see the burned-out ground car by the corner of Herald's Way and the thoroughfare Angelic? asked Shenna. The survivors of her fire team confirmed that they did. Rally on that point, she said, and Yay felt a faint stir of hope at the determination in Shenna's voice. It was banished a second later, as combat aircraft shot overhead, fast and low, and left a rippling string of detonations in their wake. Fire rose beyond the ruins in a nearby street. Human voices screamed in terror and pain, and Yave had no idea whose side they were on. Heart thumping, he forced himself to lunge out from his meagre cover and run, doubled over, through the remains of whatever home or business this had once been. It was so blackened and blasted that he couldn't tell. Rubble, glass and bone crunched under his boots. Drifting smoke turned his breath ragged and wheezing as he ran. Yave clutched his tow gun tighter. 
He expected at any moment to feel the sharp burn of a las bolt hitting him, or to be smashed from his feet by the pummeling impacts of auto gun fire. Neither came. Instead, Yave slid into the shadow of the wreck and was swiftly joined by the last few members of his fire team. Nuri, slight and wiry, was formerly a duct cleanser from the Mid Hive Guilds. Tuller had been a manufacturum labourer from Smelters Falls until he heard the message of the greater good. Shenna was stern-faced, short-haired and still boasting the granite-hewn build that life in the planetary defence militia had given her. They all held tow guns. They were all scorched and bloodied. They all looked scared but fiercely determined. I've heard from Fireteam 4 and Fireteam 2, said Shenna, and Yave's chest unhitched slightly. The thought that they might be facing this alone had frightened him badly. They've rallied in the Aqua Processor Shrine, just north of here. Lighter casualties than us. Not difficult, said Nori, expression grim. I've also had word from Shaper Kan Gok, said Shenna, a tone of savage satisfaction creeping into her voice. He and his entire tribe are pushing up from Sector 18. Crew. That'll put the fear of the Tauvar into these bastards, said Yave, feeling a vicious delight of his own. The ferocious and cannibalistic crew repulsed him, or at least the ignorant imperial part of him that even years in the service of the greater good couldn't wholly expunge. Still, so long as the aliens were tearing the enemy apart rather than him, then Yave was more than happy to call them allies. Not unless we can hold the imperial push long enough, Shenna replied. Spotter drones confirm multiple armour squadrons amongst the Vestroyan advance. And if they make the triumphal way before Kan Gok can get his tribe across it, they'll turn the place into a shooting gallery. How do we stop tanks? asked Tuller. The drones have identified weak points in the armour seals at the rear of their turrets and engine shrines. Pulse rounds should punch through with enough persistence, said Shenna unslinging a heavy canvas pack from her shoulder. Also, there's these. Carefully, almost reverently, she spilled a small cluster of orb-like devices from the pack. Each was the size of a human fist. Electromags, spirit banishers, said Nuri, wide-eyed with recognition. That's right, and we don't have many of them, so for the love of the greater good, don't waste them, replied Shenna as she rationed out the tau grenades. Yave attached his free electromagnetic pulse grenades to his belt, with the same care he'd once taken, handling his machine-stamped triptych of the Emperor, the Primarch, and the High Lords. Not just us handling them either, is it? Yave said, as a fresh squeal of gunfire erupted from the neighbouring streets. He heard harsh voices, bellowing wild slogans as explosives crumped, and automatic weapons thundered. Down with the Imperial oppressors! Slay the unbelievers! The star children are watching! Ascension is at hand! Those deluded lunatics might actually be of use for once, said Shenna. They can shout about their heretical gods all they want, so long as their guns do the work of the greater good. Now let's go. Yave, your point. Get into the ground floor of that hab block and find us a solid firing position that we can flank the Vestroyans from. Yave saluted and set out at a jog, hearing the scuff and clink of his surviving comrades as they followed close behind. Into the smoky shadows of the bombed-out hab, through blasted sleep cells and the burned-out remains of communal rooms, Yave ignored the sprawl bodies and bone-white grins of the skulls. He ignored the sick thump of his heart and the ashen dryness in his mouth, praying fervently to the greater good as he pushed down his instincts and ran towards the sound of ferocious gunfire that grew louder by the moment. He reached the front of the building and found it half collapsed. Daylight and firelight blended into red gold bands that swirled with smoke where they cut through the gloom. Yave ducked in behind the fallen and decapitated statue of St. Truculus the Unwilling and got his first proper look at the fighting in the street beyond. Hard to believe that an hour ago our defence line had a firm hold of this sector, he thought. The blasted remains of the Gervesa defensive positions were still visible among the rubble and ruin, as were the strewn bodies of those who had sought to hold them. They had put up a fierce fight against the Vestroyan advance elements, but when the gene-stealer cultists had 
emerged unexpectedly from Sector 12, the Gavessa had found themselves pincered between the stolid, well-equipped Vostroyans and the rugged mining vehicles and mutant fanatics of the cults. The results had been as predictable as they had been bloody. The greater good can still prevail, thought Yave, as he watched fur-hatted Imperial Guardsmen pouring las bolts and heavy weapons fire into the advancing gene-stealer cultists. Mining trucks exploded as they were pierced by missiles or riddled with armour-killing shells. Demolition charges and the beams of mining lasers answered, hurling loyalist bodies through the air and reducing ever more Vestruyans to corpses. As his ears caught the bowel-loosening rumble and squeal of advancing tanks, Yave turned to stare down the street. Even as the first Lehman Rus hove into sight through the smoke, it fired its main gun. The shell whipped down the street, leaving coiling trails in the smoke behind it. It bit deep into the hull of an armoured prospecting buggy, then detonated. The vehicle's torn remains cartwheeled through the air and crashed into the ruins, close enough to make Yave hiss with fear. More tanks were moving up now, grinding over rubble and bodies, rendering all beneath their tremendous weight to pulp. Mustachio commanders leaned from their turret hatches, pointing and yelling orders as they eyeballed their targets. More thumping booms, more whistling shells and fiery blasts, and now the tank's heavy bolters were opening up too, with a relentless chug that shook Yave's lungs. Oh, Frown, he breathed, forgetting himself. A quick, guilty glance revealed that his three comrades looked as horrified as he, and had fortunately missed his slip of the tongue. Old habits died hard. The gene stealer cultists should have been withering before the firestorm. Instead, they redoubled their efforts. Missiles flew from shoulder launchers, and suicidal cultists hurled mining charges at the tanks before bolt shells turned them to red mist. Explosions rocked the battle tanks, shredding the right track from one and setting another ablaze. Still, they came on. Infilarding fire! Now, now, now! shouted Shenna. As the tanks drew near, Yave forced his mind to unlock and his limbs to work. He raised his carbine, sighting as best he could on what he thought might be welding seams on the turret of the nearest tank. The pulse carbine sang as he fired it, each devastating bolt of energy, leaving the gun without the slightest recoil or heat. The shots flew true, despite Yave's fear, but though they would have cored out a Space Marine's chest cavity, the pulse rounds only splashed from the Lehman Russ's armour with harmless futility. The others joined him, their fusillade forcing the tank commander to duck back into his vehicle with a cry of alarm. Tuller hurled an electro-mag, and it discharged with a frumming crackle that sent lightning spirits dancing across the tank's hull. More pulse fire was whipping down from somewhere above, the other fire teams adding their strength to the attack. The Lehman Russ shuddered to a halt, smoke spilling from its engine shrine, while another's hull gun cut out in a shower of sparks. Yet to his horror, Yave realised that all the combined fury of the Gervessa and the Gene Stealer cultists was only slowing, not stopping these armoured bearmoths. One tank rotated its turret, shots sparking from its armour as it elevated its barrel. The vehicle bucked as the gun spoke. Yave didn't see where the shell hit, but the hail of pulse fire slackened suddenly and horribly. He would have felt more sorrow for the deaths amongst the other fire teams, except that the nearest tank was traversing its sponsor heavy bolter directly towards his own. Down! In the name of the greater good... Fire exploded, and Yave's entire body clenched with the expectation of death. Again, it didn't come. It took his bewildered mind a moment to process the fact that it was the Lehman Russ that had been blasted suddenly and violently apart, and not he and his fire team. Yave blinked stupidly, then gasped in amazement as he heard the distinctive whip crack of railgun fire. Another tank jerked, then detonated. The blue afterimage of a railgun round piercing it through and through. The Tau! The Tau have come! cried Nuri, jubilant. As another tank detonated, a voice came through Yave's earpiece, and a glance at his comrades showed him that they were all hearing it too. The voice spoke human words with the hard, slightly halting cadence of the firecast, but its message was unmistakable. 
In the name of the greater good, all alien auxiliary forces advance and present yourselves. The Sakaya Sept are here to end your struggle in the name of the greater good. Advance and present yourselves. Nuri was already up and running for the street, firing a pulse carbine into the retreating shapes of panicking Vestruians. Ye followed her, Shana and Tulla keeping pace. As he emerged into the open, the smoke whirled and blew away in rolling banks, thrust aside by the down drought of powerful engines. He looked up in awe as the silhouettes of three immense Manta missile destroyers bellied in low and rained repelling fire upon Gene Steel Occult and Imperial forces alike. Swarms of micro-missiles burned through the air and detonated in pinpoint clusters. Battlesuits descended on blurts of jet propulsion, their fire-cast pilots guiding them into land with metallic clangs and the whine of powerful servos. For the greater good! We fight for the greater good! cried Nuri. That was when they shot her. The laser blast came so suddenly that Yave was still processing what he'd seen when the battlesuit swung its gatling laser and scythed more shots through Tulla. The big man went down, half his head missing, his blood misting in the air. No! No, we're Gervessa! Gervessa! cried Shana. Her expression crumpled from elation to horror, even as Yave cried out in dismay. Shina brandished her gun as proof, but the only answer she received was the blast of the battlesuit's flamer. Yave reeled back as his fire team leader and friend of almost five years transformed into a raging torch before his eyes. His mind screamed in bewildered protest. He tried and failed to understand what was happening. Had this battlesuit pilot gone mad? Had the enemy done something to the sacred Tau technology, some insidious haunting that allowed them to control the suit from without? Yet no. As he staggered and stared around, he could see more Tau firing upon shocked Gervessa as they emerged from cover. Nearby he heard the crack of croup rifles and the alien mercenaries' harsh shrieks as their former allies butchered them. Shaking his head, tears squeezing from the corners of his eyes, Yave dropped his gun and stared in bewildered terror at the battlesuit as it stalked towards him. Why? he sobbed. What did we do? The greater good is sullied by your superstition, came the pilot's harsh voice through his battlesuit's emitters. You must be purged that it might be cleansed. Purged, thought Yave, in abject horror. Cleansed. He had heard words like that before, but never from the Tau. When they kill, it is for the greater good, he thought again, trying and failing to understand. It was his last thought, before the battlesuit's guns let fly, and he joined his fallen comrades in the harmony of the greater good. Thus is the end for all who can sort with Xeno scum. <laughs> this was great. Um, we haven't really had any short sh stories covering this much. I know there was um, there was War of Secrets, which is a novel I do highly recommend. Uh, the one half with the Blood Angels, uh, Dark Angel stuff, sorry, is a bit ropey, but the Tao stuff is fantastic in it. It covers the birth of the Tao God, this this factionalism now within the Tau Empire of Tau who want to exterminate all non-Tau because they are powering this entity, this god, uh, godling, even if you want to put it that way, this entity, this creature that's in the warp that is um, a manifestation of the combined beliefs and faith in the greater good from the psychic races, which the Tau aren't actually very psychic at all. There's a chance that they would have built a god anyway, I guess, over time, if there were that many of them, we, even with the small amount of psychic power that they have, presence they have within the warp. But... It's been sped up because of all the other races. This was great. And it's good. Andy Clark's a really good writer. He wrote, he's written a few really good books that I've read. Um, I've got a really Celestine book. It's coming up. But this is fantastic. Uh, this is probably... Uh, the last one I did was pretty fun as well with the Tau. Uh, but uh, this one is actually the best story I've seen from the Psychic Awakening. Um, and I've read most of them, I think. This is the one that stands out to me as quality. Because the quality... He's got a really... He's a really good writer and he gets the lore. Um, 
I've done a couple of reviews of his books as well. He's uh, He captures the problem. The Imperials are still, like, for instance, thinking of their, their guns to have machine spirits. Um, <laughs> you know, she mentions what the electronic grenade is. It's a, it's a spirit remover or whatever she said. You know, it's like superstition. The fact that they're believing in the greater good as uh, in a religious and superstitious way. This is what the Tau have a problem with. And now they've seen this manifested entity, which is a complete corruption of everything that they believe in. The irony being, of course, that in order to fight this entity in their minds, they have to go against the very tenets of the greater good. And I want to see this carried forward. I want to see this schism. And I want to see how this links up with the Farsight stuff. I'm a bit behind on Farsight, Farsight lore. There's two novels I need to read regarding Farsight. One's just come out. Um, but Mr. Phil Kelly is Mr. Tao. So if you want to know what's going on with the Tao and stuff and about their society, their beliefs, about the various characters, the, the powers that be within the Empire, you've got to look for Phil Kelly's books. That's all I can say. And War of Secrets is the one you need in order to uh, understand the uh, the Tao God. Now, this is an interesting point, though, in the, in the sort of psychic awakening in the 41st millennium in this era of the Indomitus Crusade and everything. I know we know the Indomitus Crusade ends... But um, I, I'm looking forward to the moment where Gilliman starts to pay attention to the Tau or when the Tau start to encounter the Necrons, who are going to be a big force, I think, in this psychic awakening thing soon. Um, yeah, I'm interested in it. It's fascinating. It's fun. It's really interesting. It's it's awesome. And I like the I like the dynamics that are being unleashed. The, the Tau have become extremely interesting to me. They were funny anyway, because Phil Kelly done a really good, a really, really good job of sort of conveying that. That their society and how fucked up it is, you know, with the castes, um, with how they breed, uh, with their belief systems, with how the ethereals rule them, how the fire, ca you know, uh, with Farsight as well. Um, very, you know, shades of sort of totalitarian, uh, utopian ideally, you know, like the, the horrors of utopia, you know, <laughs> all that stuff, you know, Logan's run, isn't it wonderful? But. <laughs> All that shit. I love that shit. It's um, it's a it's a beautiful. Oh, it's great. It's great. I love that. I love dystopias. You know, end of the world and all that sort of stuff. Necromunda, all that. But this stuff with um, you know, like Star Trek would be pretty horrible, really. I think, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as a society to live in. I don't know whether it'd be a nice place, really, because there's got to be a dark underbelly, and that's what the Tau Empire is. You know, this bright, beautiful thing in the forty first, in the grim darkness of the forty first millennium. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it great? It's not really. It's pretty fucked up once you get below the surface, you know, what they're willing to do. And especially now, there's this break with the Tao God. Anyway, I love this subject, so I've just been ranting. I'm going to go. Thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to like the video. That really helps. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Keep up with more stuff that I'm doing. Let me know in the comments what you think. And um, thank you to everybody supporting the channel. You can see your names here, uh, both Patreons and um, YouTube members. And if you'd like to become one of them and help me out, which I'd, I'd greatly appreciate, uh, you can follow the links below. Uh, if you do it on YouTube, you get access to a bunch of emojis and stuff. And I'm going to try and do stuff for members on there, uh, for patrons as well. But I think um, you get you don't get the emojis if you're a Patreon patron. But, you, you know, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not begging anymore. <laughs> I'll see you later. Have a good one. More coming very, very soon. And some longer ones uh, coming very, very soon as well. Um, so expect some good stuff because some of the stuff that I'm going to do is is really good and I really like it. So, yeah, um, I'll, I'll, you'll enjoy it because I'll enjoy it. <laughs> it's not going to be some super old story for like 1999 that doesn't make any sense with the law. This is going to be some good shit. You'll enjoy it. All right, see you later, everybody. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.